Okay, so in this video, we'll be trying to understand. Let me remove first my uh, headset here. So we'll be trying to understand the uh, motor controller diagram. So how we are going to interpret if we are be giving a motor controller diagram. So this is very important because the diagram no, or any wiring diagram will serve as a guide no, for us to be able to connect the proper connections no, during the installation or the, the installation of the um, if, if, if it is a, if it is a lighting circuit so we could uh, follow the uh, wiring diagram for that circuit in order for us to have the uh, to properly install that lighting circuit that the uh, that the operation of the said circuit will be truly the one which is intended to do so no so if it is a motor controller diagram so we'll be able to install the um, the motor controller and will function as um, required by the client okay so as a review first before we are going to go to the um, neat and grit of the um, controller no motor controller diagram so first we need to review the different types of wiring diagrams no so there are many types of wiring diagrams so we could have that one maybe um, a dozen times of that one but need first or we just discuss here the uh, common no? the common types of wiring diagram okay so first we'll have the okay so let's just see if my pen will operate now so first we will have the um the so-called pictorial no pictorial okay pictorial diagram okay so the the pictorial diagram are for um beginners no beginners especially those um technicians or electrical practitioners who have not been truly exposed no in on wiring diagrams so in this uh, type of diagram you you are going to draw no the actual appearance of the devices and the connections no so for example if we are going to have a uh, wiring diagram or we have if we are going to have the pictorial diagram of a single pole switch connect um, uh, connected to a uh, bulb no in which if the 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 operation is the switch will serve us to control the um, the bulb no the bulb so if you're going to have that one on our pictorial diagram so first we need to draw the appearance no of our breaker no? okay so it doesn't mean that you have to draw that one in 3d no but the appearance no the actual appearance if you are going to um, wire that one so you have here the supply no you have the line one and the neutral so this will be our um, line side then for example you have here the uh, gang plate of your switch and this will be your switch no with a slotted line here then you'll just connect that one on the line one then this one will be connected to the you will draw a lamp holder okay we connect that one at the bottom this one also will be connected at the so the breaker so that is a uh, a somewhat um, crude no pictorial diagram so it is not required for you to draw that one on 3d no as long as um, you could understand the appearance of the devices and you could follow the connections on the pictorial diagram okay so the next one will be the schematic diagram no so we have here is schematic diagram okay so the schematic diagram utilizes symbols no okay 
so the advantage of this one is it makes the diagram simpler no? so what uh, why does it make the diagram simpler because if you are going to make no, pictorial diagram for example for this uh, for our previous example so this is um, we could say that this is much simpler because we are just um, drawing a single pole switch connected to a uh, control controlling a uh, a light bulb so only one light bulb so what what if we have 10 15 no? 20 or uh, 20 light bulbs then we have five um, single pole switch then it will now become much complex no then our um, our diagram will also have uh, will also um, cover no covers um, spaces no on our maybe on our paper or our plans so that's why we will have a schematic diagram because in the schematic diagram we are only utilizing the symbols so no so in the previous video or our previous discussion we discussed about symbols no especially for the symbols uh, user uh, the symbols that we are going to use on uh, making or interpreting um motor controller so we have the two types of the one we have the NEMA and the IEC or the or the or the GIS no approved symbols or standard symbols so if we know the symbols then if we could have that one we could draw as a schematic diagram that it will make our plans or our uh, diagrams simpler okay so an example for that one if we will have the uh, the schematic diagram for the pictorial diagram or, or that we have drawn a while ago so first we will draw the symbol for a circuit breaker okay then we'll draw the symbol for a single pole switch okay then the symbol for a bulb then uh, the symbol for another circuit breaker so this is a two pole no breaker then we have line one and neutral okay so this will be the schematic diagram so for beginners if you are not um, familiar with the symbols so it will be uh, much harder for you to understand a schematic diagram so that's why it is also advisable for beginners to create a pictorial diagram out of the schematic diagram which will be doing um, later no if you are uh, going now to have our um, interpretation of the um, motor controller diagrams okay so we will now go to the first um, um, diagram no? of a motor controller so like I said on our previous discussion the uh, motor controller diagram has two parts so we have the power circuit and the control circuit so the first one that we are going to discuss is the power circuit so the power circuit is a circuit in which you could find the connection of the motors to the contactor okay because on a motor controller the one who controls the motor is the contactor so for this um for this diagram here so we have two different diagrams which also utilizes the same symbol uh, that the different symbol so this is for NEMA here okay and this is for IEC GIS but they have the same operation so in this one we could uh, see that we have a three-phase motor okay, use the arrow no? so three-phase motor connected to an overload relay then connected to the main contacts of a contactor for this one also we have a three-phase motor connected to an overload relay connected to the main contacts of a contactor okay so the same the symbol is just uh, the symbols used are just the one who make the uh, who 
which make these two diagrams different. So, the other one is NEMA, the other one is IEC. Okay. So, if we're going to focus on the contacts, the main contacts of our contactor. So, for this one, the main contacts are open. So, open meaning if this is our supply side, so we have line 1, line 2, and line 3, then if this is on here, the motor will not uh, will will not operate because the contacts the main contacts of our contactor is open so the same with this um with this diagram okay so what will make these contacts here to be closed no so how does the the power circuit um become operational if you are going to change the state of our control circuit so this is the control circuit for this power circuit okay so the power the control circuit will will be the one who will initiate no the operation of our power circuit okay so that's why the control circuit is much more imp uh, much important on a motor controller um, circuit okay so the the control the power circuit is dependent on the state of the control circuit if the control circuit is on therefore the main contact or the contactor is also turned on and the main contacts of the contactor will be closed and our motor will operate if it is turned off or disconnected then the motor also will be disconnected okay so this is our control circuit here no so we have the line one and the line two then we have the stop button or the uh, the normally close push button then we have the start which is the normally open button we have the latching or the normally open of our contactor so this is the contactor coil this is the normally open contact of our contactor coil so in in the control circuit if you will see a normally open contact then there is a letter above it no above it so this is considered to be a part of a contactor so you, if you are going to look for what type or what is the contactor for this contact so you just um look um on the diagram uh, which coil has the same letter inside and the uh, the same letter inside no which is also shown in the uh, open contact or the contact no so for this one this is m we have also the coil which has a color a uh, letter of m inside so therefore this uh, contact here is part of this contactor no so this is a normally open contact and this contact now is also called as an auxiliary contact so every contactor has an auxiliary and main contacts so Usually, if you will have a standard contactor, you will have a, um, a, a three main contacts, so three sets of main contacts and uh, a set, no? a set of normally open and normally closed auxiliary contacts. No? So this is an overload relay or an OL. So this is used to protect the motor from overload or heating. So it... it it could be thermal or thermomagnetic no in uh, in its stripping no then we have the line 1 and the line 2 so for this one this is just the same we are utilizing here is the uh, GIS no GIS or IEC symbol so this is for NEMA okay so now we will go to the interpretation so first we are going to interpret the control circuit no control circuit okay so maybe we should copy this one we go to a new slide here okay just paste our control circuit okay maybe we could have this one a little bit bigger okay, okay so okay so the very first thing to do okay so the diagram now is near to my face no? okay but um, uh, joking aside so first for us to interpret this control circuit is for us 
to determine the devices, the number of devices that we are going to use. So first, we need to interpret this one, minding only the devices that we are going to use. So the, the given control circuit is an schematic diagram, no? Okay, so first, we need to um, get how many uh, devices that we are going to use. So we have here the first one, which is a stop, no? Stop button. So we could have that one written as one stop, no? Push button, so PB, push button, or this is normally close, no? Push button. Then we have one start, no? One start, PB, you know? So that will be normally open. Then we have, so we need to interpret this by rung, no? So this is one rung, this is another rung. So we have here a coil, no? A coil which is a contactor. So one contactor, okay, which is, um, we should uh, assume that it, it is 230 volts, no? 230 volts, no? So the the horsepower of the contactor is will be dependent to the motor, no? So uh, as we go on with discussion, we will be also um, um, sizing up our wires, our contactors, depending on the size or the horsepower of the motor, no? But as for this discussion, we need only to count the devices that we are going to use. Okay, next we will have the overload relay. No? So we, had, we need to have one overload relay. Okay. Okay. So we have now here one overload relay. So we, we are done with this rung here. Now we go to the next rung which is uh, the latching. No? So we have M. So this M is a part or this contact is a part of this um, contactor. So we could say that our contactor must have one normally open contact. Okay. Okay, so that will be now the the um, list of devices that we are going to use if we are going to wire this control circuit. Okay. Next, we will have the from the control diagram we need to write this one or draw this one because assuming that this is our first time to um, wire a motor controller so we need to convert our control di control diagram which is a schematic diagram so we need to convert our control circuit into a pictorial diagram no okay Okay, so because we have now the list no, of the tools or the tools, no, the devices that we are going to use, so this will now be the actual appearance or the actual devices that we are going to draw. So first we have one stop push button. Okay, so we need to draw here the push button. No? Okay, so for example, this will be our push button. Okay. So this will be stop. Okay. Then we will have another one, which is a st uh, one start, no? One start. Push button. So we have here one start push button. Okay. Then we have a contactor, no? Contactor. So we have a contactor. So the contactor will will uh, will be having three main contacts. So uh, for our contactor, no? So we need to have a contactor, no? So we have the three main contacts plus one auxiliary contact, no? So we need to draw that one here. 
Okay, so we have a contactor. Okay, so we have here the contactor. So we have the three contacts. No? So three pairs of contacts. Okay. Then we have here in this part here will be our auxiliary contact. No? Auxiliary contacts. So the auxiliary contacts is usually on the side no? of the contactor. Then we have um, our own overload relay. So the overload relay is usually connected on this part of the contactor. Okay. It is connected below the contactor on the load side. Okay, so we have here the on this part we have the main contacts of our overload relay, and for in this part we have the auxiliary contacts also, which is the normally close. Okay. We should have this one much clearer, no? Okay. So this is the auxiliary contact. So these are the main contacts. Okay. So now we need to draw our diagram. Okay. For example, this will be our um, line 1 here. Line 1. This will be our line 2. So this top button will be connected to the line 1. Okay. So it will be connected to our line 1. Then the start button will be connected to the stop, no? Then oh, the start, so this will be our start, okay? Then the start button will be connected to the coil. So for this one, I forgot to draw the coil. So the coil is used, the coil contact is usually connected below the main contacts. So this will be the connection of those one so this will be the coil so it is usually um, tag as a1 and a2 no? so we need to connect that one then our a2 will be connected to the auxiliary contact of our ol no? so we need to connect that one here so the normally the normally close auxiliary contact and the other part the other contact will be connected to the line 2 now for the next rung so we need to get the normally open no? normally open auxiliary contact of our contactor so this will be connected in as you can see that will be in parallel so in parallel with the start button Okay, so this is how you are going to do the pictorial diagram of our control circuit. So, in a contactor, it is usually um, numbered, no? So, we have numbered for the auxiliary contact. So, the normally open contacts will be numbered ending with 3 and 4. So, usually the number for this one is 13 and 14. So, you could interchange this one. The connection could interchange this one because it will not matter because our control circuit is on AC circuit. Okay? So, that's, that is how you are going to do the pictorial diagram of your control circuit. So, this is very useful because you will now have a, have a guide on how to wire your control circuit. Okay? So, for the power circuit, no? We have the power circuit. So the power circuit, let's get the power circuit here. Okay. So the power circuit will just have the same diagram, no? So we will have the same contactor, no? Because the contactor is being controlled by our control circuit. No? So we will have the same contactor. Okay, so this will be the M contactor as given by our diagram, no control circuit. So this is our auxiliary contact. Okay, so this is already connected on the control circuit. Then we have here the coils which are already also connected on the control circuit. 
maybe we could just um, eliminate that one we just put here the uh, terminal you know then we have the overload relay okay these are the sorry contacts of our overload relay then we have the main contacts no? so we have here our motor okay okay so the motor has three wires no three leads no? so just connect this one over here okay then we have here the source line one line three and line two so we need to connect that one here to the main contacts then this will be also connected to our um overload relay no? then it, this will be connected now to our leads no of the motor okay we, we should have this one on straight no straight okay so let's just wait for the computer no the process no of the power circuit because I don't really have to it. so I need to restart it but let's continue so we need to redraw the uh, circuit itself no so as like I said earlier so we have here um, the contactor okay so we draw the main contacts then the terminals for the coil of our contactor then the auxiliary so the auxiliary contact no? so it is already connected to the control circuit now the auxiliary contacts then we have here the overload relay okay so it is attached no? already connected to our to the main contact of our contactor no? okay so this will be contactor m and this other guy contact with the overload relays then we will have our motor here okay so this will be one two three no so we'll have here our line one okay so connect this one then line two so this will be the supplies no and line three so because we have a three phase no three phase motor okay then we have here the overload relay so it is connected to our to the terminals of our motor so we need to connect this one here no this one also here and this one on this part so we now have the pictorial diagram for our power circuit of course uh, this is just the crude uh, drawing so you need also to maybe use a roller or a uh, t-square for this too so that you will have a much presentable drawing so because this is just a crude drawing i just used here a a um a right no writing pad no so using the using the powerpoint no okay so i hope you understand something and you are you have managed to um, understand how to um, interpret a motor controller diagram okay on the next discussion we will be trying to understand the operation of each of the motor controller and motor starter that we have discussed on this um on this topic about motor controllers okay so i hope you understand something on this video and as always enjoy learning